Okay, just because people have asked for it, this is stats and probability in Tamura. Um, before we start, Tamura has asked three stats questions across its entire lifetime. It's asked two probability questions ever. Um, both probability questions came in the spec paper and the practice paper, so they've never actually asked one in a real paper, which is quite funny. Um, the stats questions they have asked more recently, um, though the most recent one wasn't very difficult either. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fill this video up with a bunch of old ECA questions um, because they're very similar and, and have the same kind of ideas in them. Uh, though it should be said the reverse happens here in the sense that there's there's lots of probability on ECAA, um, but there's barely any stats. So kind of interesting. Um, I can't imagine you'll see much of this on Tuesday, but you might see some. So it, it might be worth just going through some of it anyway. Um, so we'll start with some Tamura stuff. All the codes will be in here somewhere so you can find the question and look it up. Uh, so we've got a set of distinct six integers split into sets of three. So there's three there and three there. Um, the first one has a mean of 10, which means its sum is 30, because each one may as well be 10, sum is 30, and median of 8. Second one, mean of 12, means its sum is 36, median of 9. Interesting, what's the smallest possible range? So I want the smallest distance between um, the smallest number, which probably goes here because this has the smallest sum, and the largest number, which I should probably go there because that has the largest sum. You can do this algebraically, or of course you can just wing it and kind of say, well, they've got to be distinct integers. I can't use an eight or a nine. I've got to be smaller, so that'll be a six and seven. Let's just put the seven there and the six here. And that leaves a 21 to go there to make a sum of 36, because 30 and then six. So that means I can put a seven there. So that's the highest thing I can put there and the lowest thing I can put there based on this logic. And therefore this would be at 15. Of course, what if you just swap the six and the seven round? Well, it, it ends up not making a difference, right? The range will still be uh, 14, which is the same as this range. And you can do this algebraically, but you'll get that the range is 14. You probably don't want to waste time on questions like this. It, like if it's just super easy to find a thing and just check it that it's not going to change when you do it somewhat in a different way, just, just take the answer and move on. Uh, likewise here, same, same kind of idea. In fact, actually, I'm going to do the opposite thing here. I'm going to do this one algebraically, even though you could have done it just with numbers, um, just to show you what that might look like. Here are five numbers. Mean is zero means that they sum up to zero. So some of the numbers are going to have to be negative, I guess. Um, their range is 20. So if I call this smallest number x, the largest number must be x plus 20. Now, I want the largest possible median. Now, the way to get the median the lo as large as possible is to just make all three of these numbers the same. Just make this x plus 20 and this x plus 20 as well. Um, because I can't make the median bigger than this, so the largest I can make it is just make it the same as this, which of course involves putting this, making this one the same as well, if these are in order. Now, what should this number be? Well, again, if the median needs to be as big as possible, then I want to make this one as small as possible, right? Because that would mean I have the, the, the biggest sum available to put into these three numbers, right? I don't want to waste my numbers here. So I'll just make this one x as well. And now I can just say all of these add up to zero because that's what the mean equals zero means. And, uh, and we'll get this and we'll get this and then we'll get this. And so x is minus 12, uh, which means the largest possible median, minus 12 plus 20 is, is, is going to be eight. Um, and that'll be our answer. Good, uh, so this is from an ECA question. Uh, test consists of 20 questions. 10 score one point, 10 score two points, uh, you get zero if you get them wrong, mean score is this. So again, we'll start here. Um, the total number of marks divided by the total number of questions, which is 20, is equal to the mean. So total marks over 20 is that. Uh, to times this by 20, you just uh, obviously move the decimal point and then double everything to get 2.3 or 23. Um, yeah, and, uh, and okay, so again, we could set up algebra here, but I'll go back to my previous strategy of just trying stuff at this point, I think. Um, she can only score zero, one, or two on a on a on a thing, and we know that she's the the, the most number she gets is one. Um, that this this is the one that happens the most often. So okay, what if she just scored one ten times? Well, if she did that, she'd have ten marks from those, and she'd need another thirteen from these, which she can't get because they come in batches of two. So reduce it down. Say she got nine ones. Well, that gets you to eighteen. Sorry, that gets you to nine, because there's only worth one mark each. So she's going to need another 14 marks. So that's seven twos. That's good, because that's less than nine, so the mean is okay. And how many questions left? Well, there are 20 in total. And nine plus seven is 16, so there are four zeros. And that seems to work out, so we'll just say the answer is four. Again, you could have done that algebraically, but probably easier not to. Always try and be flexible and, and uh, with questions like these. Okay, this is actually a genuinely hard question. There are two sets of data. You can tell because it's question 17 of Tamur. Um, which is generally a bit harder than ECA, I, I kind of think. Um, two sets of data, mean 15 and 20. So again, I'll just run through this, but when you're dealing with questions like this, the idea is about totals, right? So I've talked about it in the previous couple of questions when you when you wanted to find the mean 
being the total sum of numbers, so we turned the mean of 10 into a total sum of 30 in that first question. So we want to work out totals when you do these questions, and you'll probably recognize what I'm doing here. You times 6 by this to work out the total, then you remove the 1 by 5, then you divide the answer by 5 to find the remaining mean. Um, so that's quite straightforward. Even if you've got questions like this, though, and we'll use this tactic here as well, um, this is very similar, except they don't give you a number of students. So, okay, you just make up a number of students. So you just make up there are 100 students. 100 students each get a score of 6, that means 600 marks in total. 60 of them passed, that means 60 students passed. Um, mean of them was 8, so 60 times 8, that's the number of passing students times the marks they got is 480 marks in the passing group. Take these away to get 120 marks in the failing group between 40 people. Share them out and you get an average of 3. Um, so that's kind of interesting. We'll use both tactics here. Right? So we've got a set A of data and set B of data. The mean is, is 15 and 20, respectively. Um, and we'll say that they just have M and N pieces of data in them. Now, what happens is, uh, to start with, I guess, the to well, work out the totals. 15 times N is 15N for the total number of pieces of uh, total data points in, in, in this set. And here, 20M. And now, when you change, the means turn to uh, 20 and, uh, and, sorry, not 20 and 17, 16 and 17. Is the, is the second sets of um, is the second sets of, of means and the pieces of data because you do a one for one swap stay the same so this reduces by one but increases by one because you swapped and, and likewise um, and and so the totals there are 16 n and 17 m now the totals between these two groups must be the same right so so the total in here must be the same as total in there because all you did was swap two pieces of data around so um, 15n plus 20m must equal these two things, and we can rearrange this for this. So now we know that whatever number this is, this is three times bigger. So okay, let's just make up a number for this. Let's just say m is 10, and then just fill in the data. So m is 10 means that n is 30, and when we multiply we get this, and multiply we get this, and so now our total piece, uh, well, so the mean of combining all the data is going to be the total amount, which is going to be 650, divided by the total number of data points, which is 40. And if you just simplify that up, um, you're going to get 65 over 4, which is this one here. So that one was quite hard, but just using all the stuff that um, making up data and, and, and using total of means is, is a good strategy there. Okay, so this is the uh, first or and, and second to last uh, Timur probability question that's ever been asked. Um, N, yellow, red, red, and, and blue balls. One is selected, not replaced. Another selected, not replaced. Um, each ball is likely to be chosen. What's the probability is not the same color? So I just want to show you the quick trick here of doing um, not um, working out all of the different branches of the tree. But if you're just doing not the same color, you can just do one minus the two probabilities of being both the same color. So minus one minus the probability of both being red, minus the probability of both being yellow, minus the probability of both being blue. Now there are three n balls in total. So the probability of taking an n the first time is n over three n. And the probability of taking an n the second time, if it's not replaced, sorry, a red the second time if it's not replaced, is n minus 1 over 3n minus 1. You should recognize this kind of thing from GCSE. Do the same with yellow, do the same with blue. And now when you're doing this kind of algebra, don't expand stuff until you actually have to. This n can cancel with this n. You're looking for things that cancel straight away. So cancels there, cancels there, cancels there. That gets rid of any quadratic that we might have to deal with. Um, notice how this is just three lots of the same thing. So I can just do 1 minus three lots of the same thing. Um, because that's what three times this means. These threes cancel, um, and you're just left with this. This can be written as 3n minus 1 over 3n minus 1, I guess. Um, I don't know where that's coming up. Here it is. Um, and then, of course, this is minus minus, so it's going to be 2n, and then minus 1 minus minus cancels. So it's going to be 2n over that thing, which is one of the answers. Good. So that was from the spec paper. Uh, this is the second question that Tamir has ever asked about probability, and we're going to use the tr tr trick that we used before, which is making up numbers. So 60%, as soon as I see a percentage in fractions, I'm just thinking, oh, I'll just make up a number then. Let's make up 100 members. Of course, we're going to make up that number. That means 60% of them, oh, sorry, that means 60 of them are women, 40 of them are men, perfect. Two-fifths of the men play cricket, so two-fifths of that, I believe, is 16. So 16 men play cricket. Two-thirds of the cricketing members are women, um, so that means one-third are men, so that's one-third of the cricketers, times by three to get, um, sorry, times by three to get the total cricketers, 42, and then take away the men, or just times this by two to get two-thirds is 32. Um, and what's the probability of the member? It's a woman who plays tennis. There are 60 women, 32 of them are cricket. You play one or the other, so that means there are 28 tennis players, and then 100 members, so 28 over 100 simplifies to this. Um, so again, making up a number, really, really helpful there. Okay, another one. Uh, so uh, this is a, um, a given that question, which Tamu has never asked, but 
totally could ask, I guess, so that's why this, we're doing this one. Uh, two red balls, two blue ones, removed without replacement. So, okay, um, you've got a half chance of taking either, right, because there are two, two blue and two red. But without replacement, once you've taken a red, the probability changes, right, because you've taken one out. So there's only one red left and two blue left. So that's one third chance of taking another red. And there are two blue left out of the three, so that's two thirds, and likewise down here. Um, the same kind of thing happens. You've taken a blue here, so you've only got one left. You've still got two reds left. Okay, given that one of them is red. Now, that means that we just want to work out the probability of um, there being a red board. So that's either red, 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 blue, or blue, red, uh, which is the same as one minus blue, blue. So we'll just do that, one minus blue, blue. That's five sixths. So the chance of there being a red one is five sixths. What's the chance of there being a blue one in that? So we're just looking at these three branches. Let's just work out the two branches that have a blue in them, which is this one and this one. So that's just going to be two lots of one half times two thirds, uh, because there's just one half times two thirds twice, uh, which is two thirds. And now, so there are there are the, um, to work out given one of them is red. So we're only living in this probability. This is the chance of it being blue. So it's going to be this one divided by that one, which is the total space we're interested in, because we're not interested in all the outcomes, just the ones where there's one red. So it's this over that. Um, of course, this times is by this, this times is by this, and we get 12 fifteenths, um, and that will be it. So um, and that's one of our answers, simplifies down to this, I guess. Good. Um, another one, uh, so from this paper here, number of boys is n, 1 to 3 means that the number of girls is 3n, and that means there are 4n in total. Two are chosen random of class, probably to the both of boys is p. So that means that um, if we draw a tree around, which I can't be bothered to do, the chance of taking a boy is n over 4n, and then the chance of taking another boy is n minus 1 over 4n minus 1. And if you multiply those two together, you get p. So nice and straightforward. And again, just, just not expanding this thing out if you don't have to. This will cancel with this um, to get this uh, times that by 4. Then we can cross multiply. And this is just a very simple rearrange. Um, nothing too complicated here. You could stop here once you notice that whatever this factorizes to, you have a 4p minus 1 on top. But anyway, just keep going and you get the answer. Good. Not too complicated. Uh, and another one, this one is actually really nice. I, I really liked this question. I could definitely see Tamua asking something like this. Um, pick a ball, record its color, replace it in the bag. So it's, it's another one of these, taking it out of the bag, put it back, put it in, and so on. I repeat this procedure. So you are replacing here. So the probabilities aren't going to change as you go along, which is important. Probability that the two balls are the same color. Now, to get one that's the same color, you, it is Q over, well, there's P reds and Q greens. So the probability of taking a green is Q over P plus Q. And then because it's replacement, the probability of getting another one is just the same. So it's q over p plus q times q over p plus q, which is just that squared. That's what squaring is. And likewise for the other one. So this is the probability of taking two reds, and this is the probability of taking two greens. Probability that they're different colors, well, that's just going to be p over p plus q, if you take a red first, times q over p plus q to then take a green, or the other way around. So you take away both of those uh, cases. Um, and, and again, uh, and that equals one quarter, but don't expand things out if you can't, if you don't, if you don't have to. This just this makes p squared over p plus q or squared, plus q squared over p plus q or squared. That's the same denominator, so you can just make this p squared plus q squared. And now here again, we get p plus q or squared on the bottom, like we do here. So this is just minus p q minus another p q over that same denominator, which is great because it means I can put these things together as well, still without expanding anything. And now this factorizes beautifully to this. Um, and, and this doesn't look amazing at first, but you can square root this as long as you remember to take a plus or minus when you square root. And it might be weird because you're like, well, probabilities can't be minus. But then you read back up here, q is bigger than p. So this numerator is negative. And so actually, I'm going to take the negative here. If I had just set this up with q first and p second, then it would have factorized more nicely and I would have taken the positive. But it doesn't really matter. I'll cross multiply here and work out this, and then I can just shove this value for q into there, replace it with 3p, and um, p is called cancel, you get 3 minus a third, which is 8 thirds. Just a really, really nice question. Um, just, uh, again, it, it's combining all of these probability ideas with the same idea of doing algebra, but trying to cancel things first rather than expand things out and getting into a mess. So yeah, I just thought it was a really nice question. Um, I think I've got a couple more questions coming up. Um, this question, I don't know whether it's because I teach a lot of GCSE maths, but as soon as I looked at this question, it was like Venn diagram time. So I drew a Venn diagram, uh, German and French, uh, 10, so you both bang it in there. Ratio of, so you both to neither is five to three. So 10 divided by five is two times by three is six. So neither do, so six do neither. 42, so you German already got 10 of them, so that's 32 there. 
two uh, chosen at random. Okay, so well, firstly, the total is 75. So these are added up. Take away from 75 is 27. So that must be 27. Two are chosen at random. What's probably one study's French, one study's only German. French is 37. So 37 over 75 times only German is 32 over 74. And now again, this is uh, just like uh, what I was just saying about not expanding our algebra, trying to cancel things. And you're like, but there's no algebra here. What are you talking about? Don't multiply these things together. Factorize this into 2 times 37 and this into 2 times 16. The 37s cancel, the 2s cancel, and you're left with 16 over 75, which isn't the answer because it didn't say that the first pupil had to be French and the second one German. It just said that one of them studied French, the other studies only German. So you could have taken the two people the other way around. So we'll just times this answer by 2 to get 32 over 75. So small sting in the tail, just be careful of the wording of questions. If it had said what's the probability the first studies French and the second studies only German, then it would have been this one here, but it didn't say that, so it's going to be this one here. Just be careful. I think this is the last one. It's quite an interesting question as well. I could definitely see this on paper too, Tamura. Um, there's a lot of waffle here. It's, a, it's about a survey with, with two types of employees. And it says the survey isn't finished. So the first thing to work out is how many employees are left to do this. So add these up and you find that there are 19 people missing from category P. And add these up, you find there are eight missing from category Q. Okay. When all the responses together, they're going to take uh, uh, someone randomly who uses a car. And they're going to take the Q, the probability that person is in Q. So right now, for example, that probability is 21 over the total car users, which is 32. So right now the probability is 21 over 32. And they're asking what's the smallest this could take. Now notice how the Q users are on top and all of the users are on the bottom here, the total users. Now to make a fraction as small as possible, you want to keep the numerator as small as possible and make the denominator as big as possible. So with these missing survey takers, what I want is for all of these people to use cars to max up this denominator and for none of these people to because then they'll increase the numerator. So let's put none of these here but let's put all 19 of those there and we'll get a new total of 62 and uh, sorry 52 and, and and still 21 on the top because I didn't put any of those in cars. We'll get 21 over 52 which is going to be your answer. I think that's uh, there were other questions in ECA that were probability based but they were very similar to the ones that I did here. These were all the kind of different questions I could find. So um, anyway yeah, I hope that was helpful. It wasn't too bad. I was expecting this to be a miserable to record because I hate stats and probability but it actually turned out to be okay these questions were quite nice I enjoyed some of them